have here the ambassador of Pakistan. It's a pleasure to meet you. Um, how far has Pakistan come in terms of reaching the Millennium Development Goals and what challenges still remain and what measures need to be done uh, to continue to reach those goals? Uh, we've tried hard to sort of meet the, the, um, the Millennium Development Goals. We've been able to meet uh, not all, all of them because we've had other challenges. We, we live, we've lived through um, a region, we live in a region where there's a war next door in Afghanistan, which has greatly impeded our, our uh, development uh, goals as such. But um, there is a commitment on the part of the people of Pakistan and the commitment on the part of the government of Pakistan to ensure that we move forward in this, uh, in this way and that uh, when the sustainable development goals come our way, we will be able to uh, reach the targets that will be set in those goals. So, and then um, according to the Ministry of Education and the World Economic Forum, 42% um, of women older than 15 years old or are literate, whereas 67% uh, of men can read. So, um, what are some of the reasons so many of uh, Pakistan's women do not have access to education and what can be done? They have access to education, but they are social cultural reasons because of which they, are, they don't go to schools and their school dropouts. There, there is a huge, in, uh, there is an effort that's being made by all the four provinces of Pakistan to ensure that, that more and more women and girls go to school. And um, there is obviously clearly an understanding by women themselves now that the, the way forward is by um, going, registering in schools by staying in schools because the, the thing is that they do get registered in schools but they do not follow through the whole process. Madrasa is a system of education that existed in the Islamic world for hundreds of years. It's not a new thing. It, madrasa basically means a place of learning. So there were madrasas that were, uh, that are uh, and in Pakistan they are, the majority of the madrasas give a certain service to people, to young, to young children, who are whose families are not socially, or are not economically well endowed, to be able to send them to school as such, and therefore these madrasas basically give them education, they give them food and clothing, and they give them boarding. So it's a, they fill in a gap where the government is unable to do so. About the social position of women there, um, uh, there are still lots of problems such as uh, forced marriages uh, of uh, very young girls and uh, things like this. So uh, do you think that this is a problem that can be solved? And uh, how can the government can help those uh, girls to uh, fight this problem? The problem uh, of forced marriage is not that prevalent, I think, in Pakistan as much as it's perhaps where Pakistanis live in communities outside. In Pakistan, uh, education is the way out of, of, this, of any um, practices which are, uh, which are old and which need to be replaced. So there are a lot of studies that show that um, the amount of money allocated to education greatly increased literacy rates. And according to the CIA World Factbook, only 2.1% of Pakistan's GDP goes to education expenditures. Can you help explain how this money is allocated? And if it's not enough, how can we increase this number? Well, you see, the thing is that the education, the, uh, the allocation may be uh, small from the government, but uh, it has to be dis divided into what is allocated to uh, primary education, secondary education, and then higher education. Higher education has, has, has more allocation, and obviously the government is trying. We, go, we are going through difficult economic times, we are, uh, and therefore um, there is an effort by government to encourage the private sector to set in a step in as well. But yes, there is a need to enhance uh, the budget for the education sector.